somewhat sympathetic to terrorism. That's my opinion. I swear to God, that's what it looks like to me. You think of the market in Pakistan, for example, and you say, well, you know, a lot of people are sympathetic with ISIS over there. If suddenly we unlock the phones, they're not going to buy our product. If you think it's not commercial, I think you're mistaken. And number two, I think there's an ego element here. I think Tim Cook thinks he's above some Schmeckrick, uh, some Schmendrick uh, FBI agent. In his mind, what does the guy make? 300000 a year, 250 He figures 250 I earn that every minute. I'm bigger than him. Let him go where he, uh, let him go somewhere else. I'm bigger than him. He's putting it in those terms. There's an ego thing here and a financial thing here. There's no other reason. Thanks for the call. 855-407-282. Am I near a break? I don't know where I am. Did I bl blow through a, a stop set? I got two more hours here on this show to take your calls, to give you the news. It's an upside-down world. You got a pope saying that Trump is not a, ca a Christian, for st daring to stand up to the New World Order and wants to flood us with illegal aliens. And I swear to God, this Pope is so crazy right now with his ego. He thinks he's God Almighty to, to meddle in our domestic politics. He's violating the separation of church and state, number one. He's insulting all of us who want our borders, language, and culture secured, number two. And then we have Apple thinks he's bigger than the government. I think he needs to be brought uh, knocked down to size. There's so many other stories. I'll be back in a minute. You know, I talked about this Apple story yesterday before it was uh, a as big a topic as it is today because common sense, the average person who hears the story says, wait a minute now, we we they're not asking Apple to break into everyone's iPhone. They're saying for this specific phone owned by the company that the terrorists use, and you're interfering with a federal anti-terrorism investigation, it makes common sense to do so. So Tim Cook of Apple thinks he's so important and so big that he said, I'll stand up to the FBI, I'll show them. Now, a federal judge this Tuesday ordered Apple to create an override. Cook of Apple argues this would create a security backdoor that would have the potential to unlock any iPhone in someone's physical possession. That is such a false argument for three reasons. One, Apple has complied with the government's request 70 times before. So you have, well, why is this different? What is this really about? So... I turned to one of the most brilliant men in America, Jeff Rovin in New York City. He just sent me an email. He's a silent guy. He said, Cook doesn't want Apple stores targeted. See how simple that was? It was like all of a sudden the safe was unlocked. That's it? That's the story right there. I think that makes as much sense as any, right? So rather than help America find out who the terrorist spoke with and possibly protect us against the next terrorist attack, especially now that uh, there's nuclear material having been stolen out of Iraq a year ago. We don't know where it is. You know that these devils are creating a dirty bomb somewhere in America. You know these filthy, dirty immigrants who came in from the Middle East under the asylum policies of Obama. You know some of them are plotting an attack. What, do you have to be an idiot to figure that out? No, they're all here to become Americans. They're all here to open a business. They're all here to worship uh, the way you worship. What a stupid nation. God, do we ever need Trump. We need 10 Trumps. We need a Trump on every corner. And now you have Apple Computer putting business ahead of common sense and against anti-terrorism. And uh, guys, well, maybe they don't want Apple stores targeted. You mean simply for opening up the phone of a Muslim terrorist? They're going to blow up an Apple store somewhere in uh, Pakistan? Or Rakistan, or Hakistan, or Makistan, or Drakistan. I don't know. That's what he says. What do you think? Oh, yeah, it's about privacy, says the ACLU. Why does the ACLU want to protect the privacy of criminals? Why are they always concerned about criminals and terrorists? Ask yourself what their real intent is, and then you'll know who the ACLU really is. Them and Obama are on the wrong side of everything. That's who they are. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. My parents, they have a rule of deportation. I'm scared for them because how the deportation. I'm scared that they're going to the deport me. Here, come here, Ben. Okay. I'm going to do everything I can so you don't have to be scared. You're being very brave. And you have to be brave for them, too. Because they want you to be happy. They want you to be successful. They don't want you to worry too much. Let me do the worrying. I'll do all the worrying. Is that a deal? I'll do the worry. I'll do everything I can to help, okay? I'm a dog in a pants suit. I see trouble on the way. I see earthquakes and lightning. Nowhere to move. I see. I may have to move back to Russia where my father came. Could you imagine if I have to move back to Russia for safety? Can you imagine if Hillary Clinton seizes the presidency or worse yet, that street rat uh, Bernie Sanders? Could you imagine what this country will look like in a few years after that? Where are you going to go, India? You're going to emigrate to India and, and learn the uh, the language of India? Maybe you'll move to New Zealand. No, maybe you should move to Mexico. No, maybe you should move to France. And they can't go to France, full of terrorists. Maybe you should go to the ex-U.S. No, that's gone. Maybe you should move to England. Can't go there. Not allowed to go there. Maybe you should move to Canada. There is no Canada. Wait a minute. Maybe you should move to Japan. You can't go there. They don't take in foreigners. Wait a minute. Maybe you should move to Australia. Can't go there. Run by communists. Wait a minute, maybe you should move to China. You can't go there. They don't take immigrants. Wait a minute, maybe you should move to Germany. Wait a minute, you can't go there. You're not a Muslim. Wait a minute, maybe you should move to Italy. No, you can't go there. They only want Muslims. Oh, wait a minute, go to Sweden. They can't go there. It's overrun by Muslims. Wait a minute, maybe you should go to the United Arab Emirates. No, you can't move there. They don't accept immigrants. Wait a minute, you can always move to Switzerland. No, you can't. They don't accept immigrants. Wait a minute, you can move to Brazil. No, you can't move to Brazil. They don't accept immigrants. Wait a minute. I know where you can go. Belgium. No, you can't go to Belgium. Only uh, Muslims need apply. This is it, my friend. This is the Alamo. This is the Alamo. The United States of America is the Alamo. Now you have a demagogue in a pantsuit pandering to illegal aliens, setting up a little thing with a poor, poor Mexican girl. My parents, they have a letter of deportation. I'm scared they're going to be deported. Can you believe anything as cynical as this, that a woman would stoop to this level? No, let me do the worrying. I'll do all the worrying. She's the big, brave woman. Then you got the uh, Leninist Pope. Uh, this is beyond belief, saying that uh, Donald Trump is not a, a Christian because he doesn't want to let America be overrun any further by illegal aliens. This is, it gets crazier by the day. Then you got Tim Cook of Apple saying that he puts terrorist rights above that of his uh, terrorist rights above that of the American people, basically. So now Feinstein says we're prepared to put forward a law compelling Apple to hack the iPhone. This is one time I actually agree with Diane Feinstein. 100% this is like the Dubai Ports deal. This is a no-brainer. This is not about your iPhone. It's not a generic key to everyone's iPhone. And it's a key to the iPhone of terrorists who did such horrible things in San Bernardino. This is a very, very clear issue. And I believe that Tim Cook is conducting himself in a very un-American manner that shows his arrogance. Do we have any Tim Cook sound, Robert, of any? Has he ever spoken publicly? Did you find anything with his voice? Can't find it? Looking? Still looking, okay. Let's see, Rubio came out on this, but uh, Cruz didn't. Old Doc Rubio came out. Wait a minute. Hold it. Rubio's against this? Oh, so Rubio's against it. Look at this. Doc Rubio is against uh, hacking into the terrorist phone. Here's clip four of old Doc Rubio selling a libertarian elixir. Listen to clip 04. We passed a law that required Apple and these companies to create a backdoor. Number one, criminals could figure that out and use it against you. And number two, oh, there's already encrypted software that exists, not only now, but in the future, and created in other countries. We would not be able to stop that. So there would still be encryption capabilities. It just wouldn't be American oh, encryption capabilities, oh, but boy. people in this country could have it. Oh. So that's why this is such a difficult issue. It's not a difficult issue. You're just hedging your bet. You're trying to appease the left. You're trying to appease the so-called libertarians. You're trying to appease the so-called conservatives. And you're wrong on this old uh, Rubio, the ice cream man. 
I agree 100% with Feinstein in clip number one. Listen to this on the Apple issue. In fact, Apple has been ordered to do so by a magistrate judge. This particular iPhone 6 uh, was owned by the county, and the county has uh, supported this um, uh, legal action. Uh, absolutely, this should be uh, able to be done. Last year, I wrote a letter to Tim Cook after in judiciary we had the attorney general before us and he made a very strong and cohesive statement as to why this should happen. I happen to have agreed with Charles Schumer on the Dubai Ports deal. I, I championed it. Schumer was invited on this show many years ago because, as, as it said, politics makes strange bedfellows. Doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on. I mean, sometimes you come together for the common good. In this case, Apple is not for the common good. It's for the Apple good. In this case, the Apple is rotten. In this case, there is a worm in the Apple. It's that simple. And this man has gambled on protecting a terrorist iPhone, and I hope to God I'm right and that he's wrong. And I hope that he is. I, I hope that the full extent of the law is thrown at this Tim Cook. I don't know the man. I don't own any Apple stock. I have nothing against Apple. I own some of their products. They make wonderful products. But on this issue, he's 100% wrong. Listen to clip two from Dianne Feinstein. Now we've had this terrorist act in my state where 14 people were killed, and there is a phone encrypted that could yield additional information. And I believe that as a government, we have every responsibility and duty to see that Apple provides that information. And here we have the first court order of a phone owned by the county in which a terrorist act has taken place. All right, go on finally to clip three. Diane Feinstein making good sense for the first time in her life. I believe very strongly that, this, uh, that Apple should uh, voluntarily agree to it. In the event that doesn't happen, uh, Senator Burr, the chairman of our Intelligence Committee, myself as vice chairman, we are prepared to put forward uh, a law which essentially would require that. I think the public safety, the national security of this country makes eloquent testimony as why this should happen. She made a very, very cogent argument, and I believe she's 100% right, and I believe Apple is 100% wrong. 100% wrong. They're not doing it for your security at all. They're not doing it for any other reason than for commercial purposes, in my estimation. And I, I wouldn't expect anything less from Rubio, by the way, than to weasel around the issue. He tried to say, you know, both sides he tried to take here, and then that's what you'd expect from a guy like him. He has no backbone. Uh, I'm quite surprised that um, Cruz, oh, he did speak. Okay, I agree with Cruz on this as well. I mean, I'm a fair guy. And when Cruz makes sense, why not? Cruz may be the nominee one day. It's no, uh, no secret that I back Donald Trump because I think he's tougher than Cruz. I think Cruz has more of the facts at his fingertip uh, than Trump. I think Cruz is a more intellectual man than uh, Trump. I think Cruz is a wonderful uh, uh, man in terms of the law. I don't think that he can win against Hillary. I think Trump can. And for that matter, I don't think that Cruz is tough enough to stand up to our enemies. I think Trump is, because he has this, uh, you know, this arrogance about him, because he has this oversized ego about him, because he's not afraid of people attacking him, he'll fight back because he's a street fighter, all because of those reasons I'm, I'm for Trump. No other reason. I don't know what other talk show hosts have been promised for backing candidates if they've been promised anything. I have no idea. I know I've been promised nothing because I've asked for nothing. And you could you can go to the bank on that one. You can take that to the bank. I have n I swear on a stack of Bibles right now. I have never spoken to Donald Trump about anything that's in it for me. I never said if you become president I would like this never. Oh, on the phone I've joked about HHS and uh, NIH, but I do everything openly. I'm I'm very a transparent guy. And I wish everyone else would be as forthright as I am. I wish everyone else would state what I just said on their radio shows or their television shows if, if they've been promised anything from any candidates. I'd like to hear that so I can put that thought to rest, by the way. So Cruz, to his credit, in clip eight, says Apple should open the San Bernardino attacker's phone, and I applaud him for that in clip eight.
And I think Apple has a serious argument that they should not be forced to put a back door in every cell phone everyone has, that that creates a real security exposure